Are you at the time of life when you don't even feel like doing the things you couldn't do even if you did feel like doing them? In other words, have you reached the age when about the only time you get a gleam in your eye is when you squeeze the toothpaste tube too hard? <laughs> if so, then this half hour might help because what we're offering is a lingering look back at the 1930s and the 1940s, those dear dead days when shirt tails were always long enough to go underneath the arches. <laughs> and when, <coughs> when the only thing that, that, that we ever referred to as a drag was a pregnant Dachshund. <laughs> so let's meet the trio who will be helping us bridge the gap that lies between Charles de Gaulle and Sandy Gaulle. The first one being a singer who started his career with a great voice and a terrific style, then defying all current trends went on to become a star anyway, old sugar throat himself, Mr. <laughs> Matt Munro. <laughs> Next to Matt, we welcome back the town of Morecambe's other major contribution to the world of entertainment, the spirited lady who's been cheering us up ever since she won a gold bracelet at the age of eight for singing a song called, Ours is a Nice House, Ours is, <laughs> Miss Thora Hurst. And in the third seat, a star who's not only distinguished himself in every area of the acting profession, but he's also been blessed with the kind of diction that makes George Sanders sound like Jim Davidson, <laughs> the estimable Mr. Donald Sindon. <laughs> All right, then, let's, let's take them back to the year 1942, which is very much like 1982, except about half the price, and start them off with a big name in the popular music of those days, the band leader who, because Benny Goodman had already been dubbed the King of Swing, had to content himself with the title the King of the Clarinet. And here he is, ages before the Waltons were ever thought of, playing something called Shoot the Liquor to Me, John Boy. <laughs> wasn't it, Matt? It was yeah? a very good yeah. noise. Who was he? Well, it looked like Alan Alder in another musical. <laughs> it but it, did, <laughs> yeah. but it wasn't, it was Artie Shaw. Artie Shaw. Did you, you had a very brief glimpse of a very young drummer. Did you recognise him? Well, um, I thought I did, actually. It's you, the drummer who's 
the greatest drummer in the world, and I know that because he tells everybody <laughs> he's the greatest drummer in the world, and he is, it's Buddy Rich. Buddy Rich. Yeah. Buddy I must say it's a very good name for anybody who's not short of friends, would be <laughs> yes. Buddy Rich, isn't he? Now, now Thora, Thor, did, did, did you used to like that big band sound? Did oh, yes. Yeah, and I, and I lived amongst it too, because I married a man who was in one of those bands, That's didn't right. I? That's right. But Roy Fox, all those big bands, used to come to Morecambe. They did, yeah. They yeah, did on a Sunday night. And... Uh, just the band on the stage, just the entertainment like that. That's Marvelous. Right. Lovely, yeah. Actually, when, when I mentioned in your introduction that you sang Ours is a Nice House Ours, <laughs> there were kind of so many eyebrows lifted in the audience, it almost created a kind of draft. So I, I thought it was seats lifting oh, in no. case I was going to sing it. <laughs> just, because just, it'll, clear the, it'll clear this theatre. Uh, no, we'll clear the theatre. Just oh. give us a little memory of Ours is a Nice House Ours. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I was actually. I was only eight and I won this competition and it was out that year was the song mm. and I did a little tap dance and then I sang. I, excuse me, I can't sing for toffee, you know. Yeah. Ours is a nice house, ours is, what a nice little house ours is. The roof's on the top of that pretty little shack, the front's at the front and the back's at the back. Ours is a nice house, ours is, we've got no rats or mouses. It's old, 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 cold, 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 ours is a nice house, ours is. <laughs> 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 no. No. Now, <Donald. laughs> I don't want to upset Master. No. <laughs> that goes uh, that's, that, that's not the kind of song I would associate with you, Donald, but uh, nor would I associate jitterbugging with you of the kind that we heard Artie Shaw, that, that country. But did, did you used to go in for that? I'm afraid I was never one for this, uh, for the dance music. No, I, uh, the lightest music in our house was Gilbert and Sullivan. There was a lot of... Well, uh, that was the sort of music you grew up to. That's because, right. Yeah, it's mm. a great influence, isn't it? What and my cousins were into this... Uh, big band business and they were names I, I like talking about the moon to me <laughs> Benny Goodman and Benny Go Martin Shaw. There, there was actually a chap called Benny Goodman there was yes yeah, there was so I discovered later yes yeah so, so what 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 did you collect as a child if you didn't collect sort of records? in the way of records yeah no I, I'm afraid I was up the market there I collected uh, Richard Tauber Oh, yes. Ah, no, that's, yes. That's what Nicholas and May used to call semi-classical. Semi-classical, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, it may seem com completely irrelevant to move from Artie Shaw to the trio of glamorous Hollywood ladies we're now going to ask the team to identify, but all three of them do, if, if this is the right phrase, touch on our subject. Now, this lady, for example, Thora, now, do you recognise her? Do you remember what her name is? But that's Lana Turner. That's isn't Lana yes. Turner. Who's a chap with her? He always gets them going. It, it was a name like Garside. Or Garf <laughs> Garf 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 Garfield. Garfield. John Gar Garfield. 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 Yes, John yeah. Garfield. Yeah. Uh, actually, can you remember what film that was? Because they recently did it again with Jack Nicholson. Do you know? What? Oh well, he's he always with the Cuckoo's Nest man, no, no. isn't he? No, no. It's um, somebody who doesn't ring once. The no, I, postman I always rings twice. Always, postman oh. always rings twice. Right. Matt, a rather difficult one for you, I would have said, but also a connection with Artie Shaw. Can you put a name to this Hollywood actress? Now, I that's silence the audience. Can, yes. Who is Oh, I used to love her. Evelyn Keys. Evelyn Keys. That's right. That was yeah. a type, was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, was it? Well, I, I'll show you another film Evelyn Keys was in. She was in um, Gone with the Wind, in which she played Scarlett O'Hara's older sister. You can see her there on the right. On our right, or yes, on, on the right not of the, the one screen. With the white hair on the left. No, no, no. <laughs> now the one with the right hair, um, a actually, uh, Thomas Evelyn Mitchell. Keys, Mitchell. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas Mitchell, Mitchell yeah. and the one in the middle. Now that was one. I mean, you could keep your Evelyn Keys as far as I was concerned. You, you recognise her? I didn't recognise her. Anne Rutherford. Oh, oh yeah. Anne yes. Rutherford. Yes, yes. Rutherford. Yes, yes. Yes. exactly. Yeah. you know, shortly before. <laughs> 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 actually, isn't it? But Evelyn Keys played a character called Sue Ellen. Must have been the first Sue Ellen. Uh, D Donald, this is this is the third lady with Artie Shaw connections. Ah, well, well, yes, ah, well. I'm afraid that's Ava Gardner taking a shower. That this is. is and Clark Gable, of course. And Clark Gable. Ah, now, well, why are you so familiar with that scene? <laughs> it was a film called Mogambo, Gambo. In which? shot in Kenya, 1953. I know that precisely. Somebody else was in that film, as far as I remember. Yes, uh, Grace Kelly. Grace oh, Kelly. And besides yes. Grace, because we and have Grace, Grace Kelly, Kelly on a still, and there's Eric a chap Cole. next to her. Ah, that fellow in the middle. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant actor. I don't know what ever happened. To him. Donald Sindon in 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 Mogam. But what 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 have you have you a particular memory of making that? Film? Well, oddly enough, of that particular scene. Yeah. Because Ava was supposed to be getting slightly drunker and drunker, and she was in a, a two shot with me, and uh, apparently she wasn't doing it exactly as the director John Ford wanted it, and so she did it, and he said no, Ava, no, and take two. To, and she had this long speech, and at the end of it, she had to turn to me and say, 
Do you, what do you think? And I had to say in a very English way, I entirely agree with you. <laughs> and take two, take three, take four, what do you think? I entirely agree with you. Take five, six, always wrong, wrong, until take 14. And it was exactly right, this long speech she was going on. And I was willing her inside, but keep it up, keep it up, that's marvelous, keep it going, keep that's wonderful, wonderful. And she turned to me and said, what do you think? And I dried stone <laughs> <laughs> there was a long, long yes. silence before Ford advanced on me and said, Donald, I could kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, we've had Lana Turner, Evelyn Keyes and Ava Gardner. Now, Thora, what connection were they with Artie Shaw? Well, he married them all, didn't he? He married Not those... at the same time, but, the same. He, but they were all... <laughs> also, yeah. five others, actually. Uh, five others? Because I remember Ava telling me that he tried to educate her. Yeah. And insisted that she read The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire <laughs> and War and Peace. Mm. Yeah, no. I know, eight, eight well, wives he had all together. He worked on the theory, if you can't take it with you, you might as well wear it out. Right, now let's, um, let's, let's wind back. Um, let's, let's wind back even further to the days when British films were mainly photographed copies of West End stage hits, often with actors whose stage techniques didn't transfer all that successfully. Now, as an example, and because of Donald's interest in vintage acting styles, here's a rare clip from a 1932 film version of a successful play in which an illustrious theatrical star of those days had portrayed a divorced husband who decides to remarry his first wife. You're not going to marry me? What do you mean? Just what I say. I'm refusing you. Oh. Come now, Janet. Don't be foolish. I'll try not to be, James. It must be very difficult for you to believe that I've not been waiting here for you to propose to me. And I won't deny that I haven't thought about it. Uh, at first you frightened me, James. I thought you weren't going to ask me at all. Ah, uh -huh, but I did. Yes. You asked me to marry you as a sort of afterthought. When you'd settled your trip round the world, then you'd come home and marry poor old Janet. That will please the old dear. You almost made me feel that you wanted to economise on me. No, but really, Janet, is that fair? I ask you. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, it took some time to grow out of that technique. To I it did, is. didn't it? Yeah. Imagine what he would have done with, I entirely agree with you. I entirely agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I, I love that, don't you, with this one? Yeah. He did that, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. I have pictures of my parents at home because the style of acting alters all the time, you know, and they, the go and never dark my door again. It took five minutes to do to that. Get the, <laughs> get the arm out. Yeah. Donald, any, any idea who it was? I know the actor, Henry Ainley. Yeah? Yes, that's a marvellous right. actor. That's correct. Right. I'm in the theatre, but I mean, obviously it doesn't transfer to film all that easily. No, it doesn't. But well, I, I only, I never saw him on stage, of course, but I had him on the radio and mm. when I was very young. There was a serial of Les Miserables. Mm. And he played whatever the part is in Les Miserables. Mm -hmm. But I can never forget the sound of his voice saying, Cosette. Yeah. Cosette. Inspector Javert, I think yes. it was, wasn't it? Yeah. But, but do we know who the lady was? Dorothy Dix. Dorothy oh, Dix. Dorothy yeah. Dix, was oh, it really? Yeah. And the play? Um, the the play was the first Mrs. Fraser. The first Mrs. Fraser. Yeah. I remember yeah. the now, now you, <coughs> why we played you that is, is because you have a rather interesting project about a theatrical museum. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I've been interested in this for years, I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, oh, in, in 1942, an old actor gave me the hat that Martin Harvey had worn in The Only Way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I treasured this hat, and gradually, bit by bit, old actors would give me various little things, daggers, swords, and crowns, and various things that had belonged to old actors of the past. And I collected them, and, and I discovered in about 1958 that I wasn't the only idiot doing this. There were other people. And we grouped ourselves together, and we thought that there ought to be such a thing as a national theatre museum. And with these, so, with these keepsakes? For these things, yeah. yes. Yeah. Because it's a very ephemeral art, mm. the theatre. And yeah. what can be preserved? There are so many questions that are unanswered in the yeah. theatre. <laughs> On now to one of our vintage film trailers, half of which we'll show you now, the other half after break. Now, this one heralds the 1935 instalment of a B-movie detective series which, in the course of its screen life, had as many actors to play the part of its hero as Wilson and Keppel had Betty's. <laughs> Murderer most ingenious. But the motive, Charlie, the motive. The motive 
like end of string, tied in many knots. End may be in sight, but hard to unravel. Long journey always starts with one short step. Tell him just as soon as he comes in. I am in. That was Sir Stanley's secretary. Yes. And he said that uh, Mr. Andrews has arrived. How do you do it, Pop? With mirrors? Hey, let me drive this thing. <laughs> well, well, what sort of came flooding back into your mind, Thora, when you see oh. trailers like this? Well, I hope a lot of people here can remember Pearl White and the <laughs> Lightning Raiders. And then the Abadi Block, he was in. That, that dapper his father looked just like him. Yes, in the Abadi Block. Yeah. And there were serials, you know, threatens at the Palladium in Morecambe. <laughs> <laughs> well, he keeps thinking of me in London. No, oh, great. All those, there was always a serial, you know. And well, that, it left yeah. all like that at the end. Will Pearl get untied from the... And the train was coming when you left the cinema. <laughs> you know, and when you're very young, you thought, well, it's bound to get over before next Saturday when I'm the next <laughs> two Penrith, you know. Oh, I loved it, loved yeah. it. How about, how about you, Donald? Did you used to like those B-movies? Oh, golly, there was, there was uh, Charlie Chan movies. I think I saw every one that was made. Yeah. And there were several people playing the part, but yeah. I... Would, that if, unless anyone has contributed so far, was Warner Olin. Warner, Warner Olin, Warner Olin yes. right. But what yes. was the name of his son? Ah, oh, now, son. Matt, you're, you're, you're a Charlie Chan that, Yeah, I am. That was Key Luke. Key Luke? Yes. Key Luke, yeah. But, but can you remember any other of that? Because Charlie Chan's dialogue was much better oh, than normal yeah. B-movie dialogue. It's very funny, actually. Do you remember any other bits of the dialogue? Then? Oh, it's just the little things that sorted me, like the one I saw. He, he said, hey, pup, i got a great theory, theory for this crime. He said, what theory number someone have? It goes on explaining theory, and he says, theory like number one son. And you wait with bated breath, it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, think, we think it's funny, but the yes. point is, at the time, I believed yeah. every word of oh, yeah. it. Yes. Every but there was word, always I was on a, edge of my seat. A bit of wisdom there. You know what he said, oh. long journey start with short step. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He, really? used to, he, had one, he really? always used to talk with that, in that kind of telegram language yeah. <laughs> where you leave out the A's and the D's because yeah. it's cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, let's, uh, let's major on some singing now. Here's a 1943 glimpse of a young singing fella for whom a fair proportion of the female population would still give up their granny bonds. <laughs> a casual stroll through a garden a kiss by a lazy lagoon Catching a breath of moonlight Humming our favorite tune This is a lovely way To spend an evening tell any younger viewers who may be turning their noses up if songs like that hadn't got your parents in the mood you wouldn't even be here <laughs> <laughs> um, um, 
Thora, <laughs> 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 right, tell them who was, who was singing that. Yeah, but it's funny you say that because it never got me in the mood. It I don't want anybody to know. Well, well, first of all, it was Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. He wasn't your. He wasn't. You didn't. No, like... no, no. I never fancied him, and I never bought one of his. He records. created a very good market oh, for well, us skinny guys. Oh, he didn't guys, need me. Yeah. I mean, he's not yeah. missed anything. Well, but... who was your type? Ronald Coleman. <laughs> oh. Oh, I had right. a picture of him cut out. And I used to think, if he'd only walked down Euston Road in Morecambe, <laughs> I'd ask him for his autograph. You know what I mean? He never came to England. But, oh, I thought he was... Mad. No, I don't know whether he could sing, but he was a lovely. Yeah, but, but Matt, you, there's a certain... Going back to Sinatra, there was a certain LP that came out, I believe it was in the start of the 50s, whose opening track you did a very, very creditable Frank Sinatra. Remember the one I mean? Yes, you're adding 10 years, actually. It was the 1960s, uh, late 1950s. Was it? It was called Songs for Swinging Cellars. That's right. On this record, it's a fellow called Fred Flange. That's it. It was christened by Peter Sellers, and Fred Flange was actually me singing a song called You Keep Me Swinging. That's it. Who, that whose idea was it? Who was George it? Martins. Was it? Who yeah. went on to record other unknowns like the Beatles and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Peter Sellers. And one yeah. Well, now, did, did Sinatra, did he influence the way you sing? Very much so. Um, but not in, originally. Um, I got my first inspirational ideas for singing from Perry Como in actual Which fact. song? A portrait of, a portrait of my love. I got that on the brain. <laughs> sure. Actually, it was Prisoner of Love. That's what I got confused. Right. Remind us how Prisoner of Love went. How long from night to night you'll find me oh, yes. Too weak to break the chains that bind me mm. How about you, Don? You, you ever done anything that called for singing? Oh, God, yes, only once, I'm afraid, in my life. I was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have the great advantage of being tone deaf, do you see? Oh. And uh, when I was a child, I was always discouraged from singing, even carol concerts. And then in 1960, Terry Rattigan telephoned me and asked me uh, if I could sing, and I said no. And he said, because I want you to be in a musical that I'm putting on. He said, Robert Stoltz has written the music. And uh, I, I said, oh, and, and suddenly I was in it. And I had to sing. <laughs> and I was petrified. I had two numbers by myself. And luckily, it only ran three nights. <laughs> we opened on Thursday, closed on Saturday. I tell you what, the, 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 those, that lovely way to spend an evening is a Jimmy McHugh number. We thought we might start another singing career for you by recall, having the team recall a few other Jimmy McHugh songs that have stayed around. Now, for example, this one, uh, although it wasn't Robert Stoltz, who wrote White Horse Inn as White well. White Horse Inn yeah, too, yeah. yes. This was oh, his well, comeback. Yeah, how about do, you doing a comeback with I'm in the mood for love? Does that mean anything to you, that song? Me? Yeah. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> one for you, another Jimmy McHugh one, which I'm sure you will. Oh, oh yes. Just a few, first few lines. Don't blame me for falling in love with you. That's as far as anybody gets, isn't it? Yeah. But Charlie Coons, I used to watch him every week at the Hippodrome in Brighton. That's right. Yes. Charlie Coons. Matt, uh, another ch uh, Jimmy McHugh song from the same film as we got that lovely way to spend an evening oh, yeah. from. Can do a bit of a Sinatra on oh. this one, because it's a good one for that. I couldn't sleep a wink last night. I can't do that. <laughs> I there you go. Right. And on that swooning memory, it's time for us to ride off into the sunset. We hope something in the half hour brought on the same sentimental glow as that scene in the 1942 film Casablanca, when Ingrid Bergman said to Humphrey Bogart, was that cannon fire or is it my heart pounding? <laughs> but if all we've actually brought on is the midlife glooms, well, we asked 100 male Londoners how they define getting <coughs> old. 14 said it's when you get out of breath dialing an STD call to Scotland. <laughs> 34 said it's when you find yourself actually caring about what happens in Flamingo Road. And 48 men said it's realising that not only does practically everything hurt, but what doesn't hurt doesn't work. <laughs> See you. Dennis Norton returns with another Lux Familia on Monday week, that's the 19th of April, at the later time of 10.30. Next on Thames tonight, it's The Jim Davidson Show. Oh, the possessor.